Scripture says to enter his gates with thanksgiving and enter his courts with praise. Tonight we're going to do just that and thank God for the many blessings that he has given us. And we are so glad that you have joined us to do so. We invite you to stand to your feet as we sing some amazing songs to our amazing God tonight. That the highest king would welcome me. I was lost, but he brought me in. Oh, his love for me. Oh, his love for me. Who the sun sets free. Oh, it's free.
tonight we gather and we think about how good God is. We're gonna put our focus on what we're thankful for, how good he is to his children, how much he loves us, and how we can respond by choosing to follow after him from moment to moment. And as we lift our voices, it's not just about the songs that we sing tonight, it's about the reflection of our heart. It's about the reflection of us reflecting God's glory and his goodness. In order for us to reflect it, we have to find time to receive it. So we're gonna sing about that goodness tonight together. So we say, Father of kindness, you have poured out grace. You brought me out of darkness, you have filled me with peace. Giver of mercy, you're my help in time of need. Lord, I can't help but sing.
we're gonna keep singing tonight. We are gonna bless the Lord with our voice because He is good and He is faithful. And when everything else is shifting and changing, He is constant. His character, His promises, and His word. So would you sing this out with me? Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh, my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I'll worship Your holy name. Come on, the sun. guys, but every time I sing that song, it reminds me, what number am I at today? Have I been really dwelling on how good God is? Have I been thinking about the many blessings in my life or am I just focused on the problems? God said, worry about nothing, but with everything in prayer petition, go before the Lord with thanksgiving. And I see a room full of grateful people tonight. I know that there are people in here that are hurting tonight, but let me just tell you, there's a God that loves you and there's not a problem or a situation that you're going through that he doesn't already yet know about. 
And tonight, we're gonna enter into his gates with praise and thanksgiving in our hearts. You guys can go ahead and have a seat right now. It's a very, very special night. First Wednesday is something that is always really special to me ever since I have been at New Spring, been a part of New Spring. Uh, I love First Wednesdays. It's a very intimate time for us as the body of believers, not only to take communion, reflect on what Christ has done in our lives, but also to take account of what he's doing in the middle of our weeks, right? He cares about everything. He knows everything. He sees you and he wants to be near to you. And tonight we have an opportunity just to allow that nearness. He's, he's as real as the screen is, as the person sitting next to you, the God and the creator of the universe. And he says where, the, where his praise is lifted up, where two or more are gathered, he is also tonight. So tonight with you, we are experiencing God's presence to send on this place. So in the 10,000 reasons category, I don't know where I'm at today. Maybe it's 46, 45. But tonight, I'm gonna join with you guys in reflecting and remembering what Christ has done. In my hands are uh, a list. We've, we've reached out via social media and uh, asked people to submit. Those of you who are watching online who take part in what we're doing here on First Wednesday or at New Spring, the community of online watching all over the world, people sent these in. And uh, let's just take a moment to reflect on a few things. This one comes in from Glory. I'm thankful for life and family. Woo! First one, really? Come on, man. The Lord who provides for us. If you're not crying, you're not trying. You know what I'm saying? This one comes from Zach. We are so thankful for God's provision, especially during these uncertain times. Our health and of course, New Spring Church. We're thinking of you guys tonight, Zach. This one's from Allison. My faith, my family, and my freedom. Woo! This one comes from Melissa, my health, blessing, salvation, family, and Pastor Mark, Pastor Mark. This one comes from Valerie. I'm thankful that my church is open and we're able to worship together. I'll give an amen to that one. We only have an hour tonight to go through a lot of these things and we may not get to everybody's stuff, but we do have a few more things. We have a great video that people submitted, not just uh, via text, but also uh, a video. We put a short compilation of some of those videos of what people are thankful about. So as you're hearing these things, I wanna challenge you guys to just think about in your life, what you're thankful for. Check this out. As we head into the Thanksgiving season, we're just very grateful to have a life chocked full of family and friends to celebrate with and also thankful for God's faithfulness as we journey life with all its ups and downs. Happy Thanksgiving. I am so grateful for my small group. We've been meeting for about a year and um, they've challenged me in my faith and just encouraged me um, throughout this past year and it's just been such a blessing to have them in my life. I'm thankful for Grammy and Papa cookies, candy, and I'm thankful for the big house and I am thankful for um, Cheetos, and I'm thankful for um, Mommy, Daddy, August, and Sam, and my friends. I'm thankful for my family, my boyfriend David, and my friends, and God, and New Spring. Okay, Cindy and I are going to share some things that our family is really grateful for this year, so that we're really excited about it. Debbie, I got healed from cancer. Yes, she's cancer free. That's so exciting. But during her journey, there are so many things that we're also really grateful for. We're so thankful that we have a God that knows just what we need. He knows all our needs. And so he helped bring people to us to help take care of us. So what are some things that they did? They um, got food for us, cleaned our house, and even did groceries for us. Grocery shopping. God just took really, really good care of us at a time that we were just really scared and we were tired and people just surrounded us and took such good care of us. So we're so thankful for that. And then we're also really thankful for awesome nurses and child life specialists and music therapists to help things not be so scary at the hospital. So that was all awesome. So anyway, that's what we're thankful for. Yay. Hi, my name is Jenny and this is Dawson. And I have many things that I'm grateful for this season. I'm grateful for my family. I'm very grateful to be part of the New Spring family. I'm extremely grateful for heaven that God has promised me. 
a place where I get to go one day and see a 13-year-old boy that I haven't held in six years, and I know I'm gonna see him again. What are you grateful for? Give thanks to the Lord that he is good. The mortal seven. She learned that in Kids World. Hi, my name is Katie Henderson, and I am thankful for the year 2020. Uh, even though it has been the hardest year of my life, um, trying to grieve the loss of my husband. Um, 2020 also represents the year that my four-year-old son accepted Christ. And so God has a beautiful plan, and I'm here for it. I'm thankful for the goodness of God. That song has been one of my favorites during the pandemic, and I think it's because I've never seen God's goodness as much as I've seen it during this time. I've heard accounts of people in other parts of the world who have been trying to get the gospel out, and during the pandemic, they've had more opportunities to reach people for Jesus than ever before. Personally, I've known His goodness as I spent time with Him, and He's comforted me and guided me and my family during this time. I've seen him provide for us in spite of uh, my husband moving from full-time to part-time employment. I've seen him keep us safe when we've been exposed to the virus. I've seen him, again, just speak to me personally those words of comfort and truth. And so I'm so thankful that God is good. I am thankful for my awesome wife and our marriage and uh, for my amazing, beautiful babies. It's just what a great opportunity to get to lead and influence another life. And I'm so thankful for our church and the way that they minister to our children to help us and that they partner with us in um, leading our kids closer to Christ. I love that when we get off the highway, my daughter starts yelling, that's my church, my church. Um, that's pretty special and it's pretty important for us as we raise our family. We are thankful for our new Spring Life team. Love and Grace, our Thrive Group, and New Spring, a, a Good God, Community, Friends, Family, God's Grace, New Spring, Prayer Warriors, Armor, and of God. Well, that just shows, it's a great reminder of how good our God is, how faithful he is, and how his promises are indeed true, and they're promises that we can stand on. We invite you to stand as we continue to sing to our good God tonight. Come on, let's make this our prayer. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me All my days I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head I will see of the goodness of God goodness of God. And all my 
When you came in tonight, you had an opportunity to pick up a serving of communion, and um, we're going to receive communion right now. You can uh, tear off the top layer, and that'll expose the wafer, and then underneath the juice. But uh, I think about the faithfulness of God in so many ways. I I did a sermon, um, this is just too much information, but um, I remember About 20 years ago, God gave me a sermon, and I didn't know why he gave it to me, because I wasn't supposed to speak at New Spring that week. And I was in the middle of a series, but I just had this overwhelming sermon that God gave me. And uh, the reason I wasn't supposed to speak at New Spring was that following Sunday, I was supposed to begin a a conference in Texas. Been on the calendar for a long time. Probably a Thursday or Friday that week, the pastor of that church called me and he said, uh, we really got our dates mixed up. He said, we have advertised that you begin the service, the series next week. And uh, he said, but go, come on this weekend and we'll just, and I said, no, 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 I, I don't know why, but for some reason, God has given me a message for our church. And I don't know why he's left me in town. In fact, that Sunday when I stood up to preach that September morning, I said, I have no idea why God left me here to preach this message, but he gave me a sermon called God is Faithful. And I preached on the faithfulness of God. And I I said over and over, I have no idea why I'm here. I don't know why I'm preaching this message. Tuesday morning, two planes flew into the towers. I've thought about that so many times through the years because It's always good on good days to know that God is faithful. But when your world falls apart, that's when you really do get the awareness of God's faithfulness and that he, well, there's a verse in the Pentateuch that says underneath are the everlasting arms. And I don't know that the faithfulness of God was ever demonstrated more than a hill outside of Jerusalem when our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ took that perfect life and he laid it down on a cross and he was nailed there. And as he hung on that cross, he took our sins And basically what he was saying was to the whole world, God keeps his promise. And he made a way for us. And so tonight we celebrate that faithfulness of God. When you hold the wafer in your hand, it's a symbol of his body that was nailed to the cross and sacrificed for us. When you drink the juice, it's a reminder that his blood was the currency that paid for our sins. And and eating the wafer and drinking the juice doesn't make you a Christian you do this because you are a Christian. It's, you remember in, in our, our follow series, I testify, this is actually a testimony of your faith in Jesus Christ. And just as you are receiving the bread and the juice into your body, you're saying that's symbolic of the time that I received Jesus Christ into my life. And indeed he is faithful. So tonight, would you join me in eating? And in drinking. Amen. Just a kind of a housekeeping word. You know, one of the things people ask sometimes is, how do you join New Spring Church or how do you become a part? We don't use the word joining very much, but we do have something called Life at New Spring, and it's coming up this weekend. You have your choice of either a Saturday night dinner or a Sunday morning kind of brunch, and you can sign up for it, but it's just an opportunity to explore our church, and we still have some openings, especially on Sunday Uh, But if you'd like to explore becoming a member of New Spring, all you have to do is sign up at Life at New Spring. There's no cost associated, and there's no obligation. We want you to know for sure that it's God's will for you to join, but you just get an opportunity to see some of the ministries and maybe see more of New Spring than you might see on a weekend. Um, Normally, on first Wednesday, I teach, but I I hope you'll bear with me and uh, allow me just to worship with you tonight. Uh, My mother is dying. Um, She contracted pneumonia last week and um, it's taken a really hard turn and her body's in the process of shutting down and 
And uh, we were told this morning that she probably wouldn't live throughout the day. And I'm just, I'm just kind of tired and exhausted. And if you'll just kind of bear with me and, and let me worship. Tonight, I'd already talked to the team. It's interesting. I talked to our team and I said, you know, we've been having these prayer nights and I love these. But I said, I feel like being the month of November, I'd like to just dedicate this for Thanksgiving, giving thanks to God for his goodness in our lives. And I've been thinking about that a lot. I got to tell you about the strangest irony. Is it okay? I'm not going to preach. Let me tell you about a peculiar irony. I don't, I mean, you know, our times are in God's hands and you know, the doctors say that mom probably will pass today, but I don't know. I mean, who knows? But if she does, one of the strangest ironies is the same thing happened to me the week that my dad died. I was scheduled to preach the following weekend someplace else in the country. And it was kind of like something that I knew I should keep the commitment. For one thing, that's kind of the world that our family has lived in. If you know, that's, that's what we live to do is to minister. But in 2013, when my dad died, I was scheduled to preach. You guys know Johnny Hunt. I was scheduled to preach at Woodstock. And they had had it on the calendar for a long time. And, and um, it was really something that I... My dad died on Tuesday. We had the service here on Friday. Friday morning, we had another service in Texas, just like we were with my mom the following Monday. But that weekend, I was scheduled to preach in at, at Atlanta at Woodstock. So the Friday after my dad's service, I'm sitting at the airport getting ready to fly out to Atlanta. And the sermon that I had is a sermon that probably a lot of you did not hear because I preached it here in 2008. It was from a series called Dreams. And... It's on Jeremiah 29, 11. I know the plans that I have for you. And so that weekend when my dad died, I preached that sermon. I think I've only preached the sermon five times in all these years. Well, this will probably be the fifth. Well, I'm scheduled to be in Cincinnati this weekend at a great church. And the pastor and his wife are very, very dear friends. And she, her name is Joy. And she has cancer and she's looking at probably one of the most dramatic, huge, massive surgeries that any cancer patient could have. And uh, the surgery's in a few days, and she'll be in the hospital for eight weeks. And Johnny and I and some other friends have just said, we're going to cover some weekends for this pastor so that he can be with his wife. You know the sermon I had planned? Jeremiah 29, 11. I know the plans that I have for you. Don't you find that ironic that if my mom goes home, I will have been scheduled to preach somewhere else in the country that I couldn't cancel, and God had the same sermon both times. And I don't know who I'm talking to tonight because I'm not teaching or preaching this evening, but all of us, all of our families are going to go through various valleys. And isn't it good to know that when we go through the dark valleys, that... Uh, I just got word that my mom is gone. But I can tell you tonight, he's faithful. He's faithful. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercy.
so we sing. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. And all many of you in the room tonight with your burdens bringing them we're going to turn our attention again to God's heart for his children when he created earth he didn't create it to be a broken place but sin came into the world and wrecked God's vision and plan for a moment and the next set of plans went into motion a plan of redemption and redeeming and for all who have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God but for the gift of grace we can all say this together that we don't know where we would be without the cross so we're going to lay our burdens at his feet tonight knowing that he's good, knowing that he's faithful, that he has a plan and purpose, that he goes in front of us and he's already making a way that we can't see right now. So would you join me in singing this out right now? See, I would be homeless without your goodness. I would be desperate without your love. Slave to the dark. Let me just say a word a few moments ago I got a message it was premature so just keep, keep praying all right thank you God bless
He's still the miracle worker. He's still the great physician. He's still the great healer. Even if his plan isn't fulfilled on this side of eternity, we know in heaven that everything is made whole. Everything is made right. And one day he's going to return. And his plan, when he created this earth, will come to be. Every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess. So we know right now that we have a choice. We're not going to let the rocks cry out. We're going to join our voices with all of creation and all of heaven and say, God, by your stripes we are healed. Oh, thank you, Jesus. came he modeled what a life of worship looks like to walk with God to pray without ceasing that recognition that God is in control tonight as we gather with Thanksgiving in our hearts it's not in spite of everything that's happening in our world it's knowing that it's happening and I'm still gonna worship through it. My prayer for us as a church that God would take us deeper into worship. And I don't mean worship with the song, I mean worship in a life. That we would learn to walk closer with him, that we would hear his voice, that we would see him all around, that our awareness of his spirit dwelling inside of us would be increased. We must decrease so he can increase, to become more like him, from glory to glory. And with that in mind, I can say, oh yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley, and yes, I will bless your name, oh yes, I will. Sing for joy when my heart is heavy for all my days. Oh, yes, I will for all my days. We say, Oh, yes, I will. Come on, church. Say, I count on one thing. I count on one thing 
same God that never fails will not fail me now. You won't fail me. asking you to hear our praise. We recognize that you are good and that you are in control, Father. And what we pray tonight is that your will would be done in our lives. Your will, Father, that we would release whatever the expectations that we have of the way things should have gone or the way that they should be and that we would embrace you and your love for us as your children. That the world would see us differently because of your love. Oh yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley and yes, I will Bless your name, oh Jesus. Oh yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy for all my days. Oh yes, I will, you say, for all my days. Oh yes, I We just have a few more minutes together tonight. And I love this time that we have. Not because of the songs that we sing or the stage or the lights, but just knowing that the God who created the universe is near to us. And no matter what's happened to your week in this point, if you've lost a loved one or your finances are in trouble or you're a parent worried about a son or a daughter who's gone astray if you yourself feel too far from God that he can't reach you remember that God is near somebody needs to hear that tonight my spirit needs to be reminded of it father that you are near to your children and to your people. Father, we submit ourselves to your purpose for our lives. You told us, you made it simple. 
love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all the strength, with all your might to love him and to love your neighbor. Father, help us to be a church that loves. Help us to be a body of believers that is set apart by the gratitude and the praise that exits our lips. Father, let it manifest in our hearts. Let it be a part of who we are that we could not be separated from the goodness of the God who loves us. We continue to reflect on the goodness of our God and who you are tonight, God, for meeting us in this place, for being who you have said that you are. We say thank you.
We want to maintain this spirit of worship and gratitude as we continue to reflect. But I would ask that you would also look forward and ask God, what do you want me to do? What do you want from my life? And just ask him to search you and to refine you. If we are truly going to be set apart, it's gonna be God working through us that is gonna be the difference. It's not gonna be of our own strength. We just got word that Mark's mom did pass. So continue to pray for Mark, Mary Alice, their family. Uh, Edith has been a huge part of the New Spring story, not just in investing in Mark. So we ask that even though this is a time of mourning and reflecting for them, we also know that we are so thankful for what her life represented and who she was. In this life, there will be trouble. But we have the hope that transcends the troubles of this life in Jesus Christ. And we want everyone to be a part of that story. So we're gonna leave the room open tonight. If you just wanna stay and pray, we're gonna leave this atmosphere. Take time to reflect on the many blessings as we're heading into the Thanksgiving season. Let's begin by giving thanks tonight to the King of Kings. So we're just gonna pray, we're gonna dim the lights. You guys are free to leave. Thank you so much for joining us here tonight, for being a part of First Wednesday. It was a very special one indeed. Thank you guys for continuing to pray for our leaders, for our country, for Mark and Mary Alice. We love you guys. Hopefully we'll see you this weekend. God bless.